What's up guys, it's Lily with ammo.com and today's topic is 22 long rifle. So in this video, we're gonna go over practical uses for that caliber as well as address the question of is 22 long rifle good for self-defense? So let's get started. All right, so let's start with practical uses for 22 long rifle. So the first thing that comes to mind for me is going to be teaching kids how to shoot. So when you're dealing with kids that might be a little bit less uh, capable, they've got a smaller frame, Starting them with a 22 is really manageable. It is gonna allow you to have good control and safety over the situation, uh, as well as let them focus on the safety aspects, the actual proper firearm handling, rather than being concerned about the noise or the recoil. This is gonna build their confidence so that later on they can move up to something a little bit larger, but already have the skills they need to handle it. Um, in line with that, so, I've been a teacher for years and I do come across students who are fearful or hesitant and that's natural, especially if it's something new to them. So I do like starting those individuals off with a 22, whether that be a pistol or a rifle so that they can focus on their proper handling, they can focus on safety uh, and not worry so much about the sound or the recoil that might accompany a larger caliber. I found that this works really well to boost their confidence and get them equipped with the skills that they need before moving on to something larger that they obviously have a misconception of whether it's gonna to be too powerful or come back and hit them. I wanna take all that fear away, let them focus on what matters, build that confidence, and then we can move up to something a little bit different. Another thing would be hunting. I've used 22 long rifle plenty for squirrel hunting. So if you're hunting small game, Things like that, it's perfect. It's really lightweight, easy to carry around. You can even get it in subsonic. That way you can use your suppressor and be even quieter than it already is. Uh, so it's a really useful round for that. Also, it's nice and small, so it's not gonna blow your squirrel to bits, which is incredibly helpful if you do want to actually harvest it and eat it. Um, in that vein, you can also use it as pest control. So as you'll see here, they do make 22 shot shells. Um, what it is, is a plastic casing over the projectile that houses a bunch of BBs. It's designed to neutralize small varmints, snakes, things of that nature. If you are using that for pest control, please be sure you're allowed to shoot on your property or the location that you're trying to use it in. I had a student quite a few years ago who was mandated to take my class, uh, part of a safety program because he decided to use his 22 in an apartment complex hallways to neutralize a rat problem. I'm nosy, so I followed up and it turns out he really did help with the problem. However, it was illegal and he did strike a lot of fear into other residents. So always be cautious and double check before you think you're gonna save the day and solve the problem. Now with that, you might find some feeding issues with that ammo because it is a plastic housing, it can crack as it's going over the feed ramp and into your barrel. That happens, it is a little bit fragile. Also, you might find intermittently having cycling issues. Uh, I was able to shoot quite a few shots in the firearms I tested it in, uh, but I did at one point have issues where I had to manually cycle the firearm just because it wasn't expelling the casings and reloading quite properly. So the last practical use I want to mention is going to be practice. So I have a lot of students over the years who have said, listen, I want to go to the range more, but it's really expensive between ammunition, range costs and everything else. They just can't go as often as they would like. And I understand that. So one of my suggestions has always been get a 22 rifle and a 22 handgun. That way you can still go to the range and practice without costing you an arm and a leg. A box of 50 rounds of 22 is typically five to $10 a pack, which is significantly less when you're considering things like nine millimeter, 380, 506, uh, anything along those lines. Now I understand you're not gonna be able to practice recoil management as well because there is gonna be a drastic difference but you still can practice your fundamentals. So you can still work on your grip, sight alignment, sight picture, trigger control, breathing, stance, all sorts of aspects without having to spend so much money every time. Um, another reason it's good to have those in your collection is because of all the reasons I just mentioned before. If you happen to want to teach your friends who are a little hesitant, if you end up wanting to train your children, um, if you want to start getting into small game hunting. So there, it's a very versatile caliber. So lastly, let's address, is 22 practical for self-defense? My short answer is going to be no, but let's go a little bit deeper than that today. So can 22 long rifle be effective for self-defense? Absolutely. It's been tried and proven that it does have the ballistics necessary to neutralize a threat in one of those situations. However, 
when it comes to picking the caliber that we are going to utilize for our personal safety, I think there's other variables we have to take into account when determining if that's the route we would like to go. So first and foremost, a lot of people think they're going to be John Wick in an emergency. And unfortunately, that's just not the case, okay? Uh, a real-life self-defense situation is incredibly different than stagnant shooting at the range and practicing. So we definitely don't want to have any false confidence that those abilities are going to 100% translate over when we're experiencing loss of fine motor skills, now a target that is moving. Also, what is the condition of the target? Their size and strength, any substances that they might be on, uh, their pain tolerance, things like that. So all that needs to be taken into account when we're deciding what would we we would want to carry. Uh, another thing we want to take into account is going to be shot placement. So with the 22 being such a small and light projectile, you're really limiting yourself on the points of access that you would need to address in order to neutralize the threat. And we've already discussed in those types of situations, you may not be shooting at your highest accuracy. Now with a caliber a bit larger, even if you did not hit quite where you anticipated, but still engage the threat, that may be enough damage to stop them or buy you the time necessary to create a safer environment. Now, with the 22, the unreliability is just what's concerned. All in all, yes, the ballistics don't lie. 22 can be an effective round for self-defense. However, with the variables that we considered today, and that wasn't even all of them, I think it's safe to say that 22 is not the most practical or reliable option for that application. Now, just because of that, it does not take away from the fact that this is a very versatile round. It's very effective for the applications we discussed earlier, and it can be enjoyed by anyone of any experience with firearms. So when it comes to cost, practicality, and a wide range of uses, I would say that it is a great round and something that we should all consider purchasing in our collections. And that's it for today. So do the thing, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and leave us a comment if you have any questions or if there's any type of content you want to see. With that, don't forget to visit ammo.com for all your ammunition needs. We'll see you next time.